All right, finally, I want to talk about voltage standing wave ratio. Voltage standing wave ratio becomes an issue here because we've done nothing to constrain it to this point. So the visual as far as we know, could be anything. So we need to know what that value is, and if it's too big, we're going to have to do something about that. So to make sense of this, we go back once again to our paradigm of transistor, input matching network, output matching network, and I'm just reminding you what all our variables are here in this diagram. The visuar at the input is given by this expression, which depends on gamma sub i. Remember, gamma sub i is the reflection coefficient looking in this way, right? It's what the uh, user of this device sees looking into the input of the amplifier. And I'm just reminding you here, that also corresponds to an input impedance, z sub i, in the usual way. Similarly, the output visoire depends on the output reflection coefficient, its magnitude, and that's what we get looking in this way from the output, and I'll point out that corresponds to z sub o. That's not a zero, that's an o here. Now, of course, the problem is what is gamma sub i and what is gamma sub out here? Now, there are many ways to compute these reflection coefficients. Uh, the one that might come to mind immediately is to say, well, we have some impedance over here. We have an impedance looking in this way, which we could somehow figure out. And then gamma sub i is computed in the normal way from those two impedances. I'll tell you, that's a bit of a pain. Uh, what we'd rather have is something which is based on parameters which we're already working with. So I will jump to the end here and tell you how to do that. It turns out that you can get the magnitude of gamma sub i very quickly from the embedded input reflection coefficient and gamma sub s using this expression. So this expression is very convenient because gamma sub s is something that we already know as part of the design process and gamma sub in is the embedded input reflection coefficient here which we already know how to compute in terms of the s parameters. So this is a very simple way to get gamma sub in uh, directly from parameters that we've already been working with. And similarly, we can get gamma sub out using a very similar looking expression. So without further ado, let's show how we can use this concept. In this example, we're going to determine the input and output VSWR for the LNA that we designed in the first example here. In other words, the example where we tried to minimize the noise figure. So said differently, what is the input and output VSWR for the LNA that we designed where we minimized the noise figure? Well, here's the solution. The output was conjugate matched, so gamma sub L is gamma sub out conjugate. Uh, we find that gamma sub out is zero. That's a consequence of being conjugate matched. And therefore, the visor at the output is one. So that's simple. Using values of gamma sub S and gamma sub N, uh, we find that gamma sub I, its magnitude is 0 0.706 using the equations I just showed you. And then we get that the visoire is 5.8. So here's a situation for that original design where we minimize the noise figure. The output VSWR is great. The input VSWR is a disaster. 5.8 VSWR in most designs would be considered to be unacceptable. Now I'll tell you there are some situations where we are fine with a VSWR that's that, that high. In fact, there are actually quite a few situations where we might consider that VSWR to be acceptable. But oftentimes, uh, this VSWR would be considered to be too high. So this begs the question of how do we come up with a design that gives us the lowest possible or practical noise figure with an acceptable VSWR. So somehow now we have to incorporate the VSWR into the design process. So that's what this example is about. Find gamma sub s and gamma sub l. In other words, find the design, which minimizes noise figures subject to the constraint that the VSWR is 2 or better at the input and 2.5 or better at the output. This is a pretty typical set of visual uh, requirements to have. So this is a very practical design problem statement. I want to come up with the lowest possible noise figure but I'm going to put a constraint on how bad the visor can be at the input and the output. And then I probably want to uh, optimize everything else. And of course, as I'm doing all this, the transistor must be stable. 
So this transistor is not unconditionally stable. So I have to keep checking to see whether I'm uh, crossing the line into instability. So now we see a practical design problem where many things are going on simultaneously. I have to keep track of the gain. I have to keep track of the noise figure. I have to keep track of the input and the output VSWR. And I have to keep track of stability. So here's an outline of the solution. I'm just uh, showing you a, a text description of how to go through this with the results. But you should do this yourself because I think this is, uh, this is probably as close as we get, at least in terms of lecture, to a problem which reflects a practical amplifier design problem. So here we go. In this particular approach, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the uh, direct brute force approach. If you don't remember what that is, you can go back to a previous lecture where I talk about brute force design, brute force selection of gamma sub s and gamma sub l. And what that involves is searching over a grid of values for gamma sub s and gamma sub l, and then seeing what you get for each one of those choices. That's a four-dimensional search, right? Because gamma sub s has real imaginary components, gamma sub l has real imaginary components. So you're searching over the Smith chart, all the values of gamma sub s and gamma sub l are within the unit circle and you're just systematically marching through all the possible values of gamma sub s and gamma sub l so that's a four dimensional search for each one you check stability in other words the embedded input reflection coefficient that results should be less than one the embedded output reflection coefficient that results should be less than one if it's stable then you should check to see what the vswr are at the input and the output and see if you meet these requirements. If you do, then you calculate the noise figure, see what you get there, and you keep track of it. When you see a noise figure which is lower than what you've seen before, then you remember that value of gamma sub s and gamma sub l, but you keep going because you might find a lower value somewhere else. When I did this, I used a grid spacing of 0 0.05 in both the real and imaginary coordinates, and what I found was the best value of gamma sub s was this, the best value of gamma sub L was this. That gave me an input VSWR of 2.0, an output VSWR of 2.4, which meets the requirements. The noise figure was 0 0.9 dB. That compares to 0 0.73 dB when I did not constrain the VSWR. So we see a little bit of degradation of noise figure here, but that's apparently just the price I have to pay for meeting the VSWR requirements. And then in that situation, I found the TPG was 20.1 dB. And that's compared to 18.5 dB for the unconstrained noise figure minimization based design. So let's summarize what we've talked about in this lecture. First, noise figure of an active, possibly mismatched two port, such as a transistor in an amplifier design, can be characterized using the parameters F sub min, gamma sub opt, and the normalized noise resistance, which, just like the S parameters, depend on a reference impedance. In other words, you have to say what Z naught you're going to calculate these for. Depends on the frequency. Depends on how you biased that transistor. It depends on the configuration. In other words, is it a common emitter, common source, or so on. The best noise figure normally occurs when the input port is mismatched. This is a, a fact that you must keep in mind. The best noise figure normally corresponds to an input mismatched transistor. So for example, simultaneous conjugate matching, which maximizes gain, will rarely give you the best noise figure. In a design consisting of a single active two port, increasing gain and decreasing noise figure are often contradictory goals. Now we've seen that. Furthermore, designs with desirable gain and or noise figure often exhibit VSWR significantly greater than one at either the input or the output or both. And the three-way trade-off must be considered. And this becomes a four-way trade-off if the transistor is not unconditionally stable. This concludes this lecture on amplifier design, noise figure, and VSWR.